In the month of October every year, we think about two beautiful subjects, the Rosary and the Holy Angels. But there is a lot of overlap between these two subjects. We can think about them together. The Rosary is a prayer to Our Lady, and Our Lady is the Queen of the Angels. And the mysteries of the Rosary are almost constantly making us think of the angels. The first mystery of the Rosary is the Annunciation, when an angel appeared to Our Lady to tell her that she would be the Mother of God. And then the, the birth of Our Lord was announced by a glorious angelic choir that sang a beautiful hymn of praise to God, to the shepherds, that the church loves so much that it says it in, in the Mass. In the first sorrowful mystery, we know that when our Lord was going through his agony in the garden, he was comforted by an angel. And there are angels in most of the glorious mysteries too. At our Lord's resurrection, the angels rolled back the stone of his tomb and they gave the news of his resurrection to the apostles and the holy women. There is also an angel that comes after our Lord's ascension into heaven and tells the apostles not to stand there looking into heaven. And the angels brought the body of Our Lady into heaven after her death. <clears throat> so we can certainly meditate on both of these mysteries at the same time. Now in terms of saying the rosary, we all know how important this is for the practice of our faith. Every good Catholic knows this. The rosary is a very good test of piety and devotion. Anyone who says the rosary every day is, is practically guaranteed to be a good, practical Catholic and is probably in good shape in the rest of his spiritual life. The rosary is a test of our humility, too, that we submit ourselves to this simple devotion and we accept it from God that this, the, the rosary has such great power. And if we are properly formed as Catholics, we would have much, we have much greater confidence in the virtue of a, of a simple person with, with a very simple faith who says the rosary faithfully with love. Then we would have, we have more confidence in someone like that than we have in someone who is well educated as a Catholic, but who is, has intellectual pride and who thinks that the rosary is something for children or something beneath him. Unfortunately, that is the attitude of a lot of people in, in the Vatican II Church. They are told, even by, by the modernist priests, not to say the rosary because it is a waste of time. <clears throat> But as I said, we also think about the holy angels in this month. And unfortunately, unlike the rosary, most of us tend to neglect the angels probably quite a bit. How many of us even think frequently about our guardian angel, this powerful being that God has appointed to watch over us and protect us? Our guardian angel follows us all through our lives, through all the different circumstances and places that we are in, different jobs we have, different places we live, different states of life that we pass through on our way from infancy to adulthood and old age and finally death. Throughout all of the changing events and circumstances of our life, our guardian angel is always there. He never ceases to love us. He never slacks off for even one instant in his care of us. And our guardian angel is never discouraged either by all of our failings, even though we, we give him plenty of reason to be discouraged. But the angels are not subject to human emotions like that. And in fact, they only trust in God and strive that much harder for our souls, the more they see that we need it. And the reason they are like this is because they are assigned to help us by God. 
And in the same way, God is also patient and, and long-suffering with us too. And he gives us numerous opportunities and lots of time to repent. The angel imitates his, his creator, God. <clears throat> but we tend to forget about our guardian angel because we don't see him in the same way that we tend to forget about God too easily, too, in general, because we don't see him either. Of course, we believe in the guardian angels because this is a doctrine of our faith. Our Lord himself taught it to us. He said, I say unto you that their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Referring to, to, to little children, but it applies to everybody. We see also, if we read the Bible, that the angels are constantly working on behalf of man. At least the good angels are. And the evil ones are constantly working against us. But God uses angels in the exercise of his providence. We don't need to prove that, that angels exist. Someone who doesn't believe in angels would have to deny the, the Bible as a whole. And the, the, the Catholic religion as a whole. So someone who doesn't believe in angels would not be Catholic at all. And again, this also reminds us of the Vatican II Church, that it doesn't talk about angels in general. In fact, when they, the innovators wrote the new Mass, they took a lot of the, the collects of the, the feast days from the, the Catholic Missal, and they went through and deleted almost every mention of angels in, in those, those prayers. But the world would be a pretty terrible place without the holy angels and everything that they do for us. And we really are blessed in our faith to be able to believe in, the, in, in angels and to believe in the existence of the supernatural world in general. We have hope from our faith that after our time in this veil of tears, if we serve God, we will receive an eternal reward with the holy angels and the saints and with God in heaven. We tend to focus too much on the difficulties and the hardships of our religion. And we don't think enough about the great joy that the thought of, of a heavenly reward should give us. We tend to be always naturalistic in our thinking, which is the result of our fallen nature to only look at, at the physical world around us and to forget everything else. But devotion to the angels is a powerful remedy against that constant degradation of our minds in only looking at what is, what is physical, what is carnal. The thought of a pure spirit, one that is perfectly good and virtuous, or one that is pure evil in the case of the devils, really makes us see the reality of our existence. It makes us see that the struggle that we are in to save our souls and to serve God. So we should think about the holy angels as much as we can. The angels, in a sense, minister to us. And, and this is a beautiful thought. They are, are so much above us, so much more powerful, more intelligent. The good angels are so much more holy than we are. But they act like our servants by taking care of us and protecting us because God asked them to do that. They love us with an <coughs> immense burning love that never fails and they do everything in their power to keep us from suffering harm, either spiritual or temporal. Whether we are awake or asleep or thinking about them or not, they're constantly watching over us, even though we can't see them. They put good thoughts in our minds. They remind us when we are doing something we should not be doing. They warn us about danger, and they make us desire heaven and desire to serve God and practice virtue. I'll close today with a quote from a beautiful book about the angels by a French priest named Father Boudon. He says, Are we not overpowered with motives to love our angels 
These blessed spirits are our best friends. Their love is the most faithful, constant, amiable, patient, and universal love that can exist. Everything about their love is great and disinterested. Because what do they receive for their kindness? They receive injuries, ingratitude, forgetfulness. Infidels know them not, and heretics refuse to honor them. And even Catholics are not mindful of them. Who can comprehend this monstrous return for so much love? And he concludes by saying, We have to love the holy angels and love the God that created them and gave them to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.